the, the end goal is, is to win something. No, you know, and, and how you define win, how you define victory, how you define accomplishment or the finish line, that's a different issue. That's a different story, right? But the point is, that's what you want. Welcome everybody to another episode of the In The Know series. Today we are talking with Andy Starr from Level C. Andy, so pumped to have you on. Um, it's been awesome just getting to know you these past couple months and weeks. We've had some awesome conversations. And today we're gonna kind of break down brand strategy. We're gonna give it, we're gonna give it our absolute best shot. Absolutely. Because every, every, everyone's doing that these days and, and some do it better than others. But yeah, we're gonna give, we're gonna give it a solid. I think so. Well, to give our audience kind of a, a little bit of a background on Andy and who he is, um, he is the co-founder and managing partner of Level C um, with Brandmaster Marty Newmeyer. So actually, if you just want to touch on Level C real quick, I think that would be a, a great little plug there. Yeah. Um, Level C, I started Level C with Marty. It is a professional education masterclass program in brand. We talk about, we define brand, we talk about the core principles of brand, brand strategy. Eventually, we'll be talking about um, brand architecture. There's, there's basically nothing out there that talks about that. Um, and uh, our program is interactive, it's hands-on, it's, collabor it's collaborative. And um, I'm the luckiest guy I know because I get to teach brand alongside the guy who wrote the book on brand. So that's what we're doing. We think it's pretty cool. And I have to second that just because, I don't know, I've read all of his books and, you know, I've now taken your course and it's just been awesome to see how somebody like that does it. You bring your experience too, and it's just an awesome experience. So to anybody listening who's looking to get into this sort of thing, this is your guy right here. Um, so I guess kind of moving on from that, um, he has 17 years of brand experience um, he's a multi-instrument musician, and he focuses on the drums. Um, and then I know you wanted to share a little, a little known fact about yourself. So, oh no, 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 no! I'm only sharing it because you asked so politely. You asked me to share a little known fact um, with folks, th something that people really wouldn't know about me unless they knew me. Um, and it catches everyone off guard every time I tell them. Uh, I actually uh, am a a long time recovering law school student. I am not a lawyer. I got out before it was too, too late. But yeah, that's, some, that's something that people don't know about me. Yeah, uh, you definitely caught me off guard with that. I would not have guessed that. But um, okay, very cool. Um, and he's located in Houston, Texas. So um, that's a little bit about Andy. And today we're going to be discussing brand strategy. What is it? Because you hear about branding, you hear about strategy, you hear about business strategy, graphic design, um, a bunch of different things. And today we're just going to delve into this um, and give you guys some insight um, from an expert, if you will. So Andy, thanks so much for being here. No, thanks. I, I, I've been looking forward to this. And I would just say, I'm the last person to call himself uh, uh, an expert at all. I get to work with the expert. So if I'm, if I'm guilty or innocent by association, that's, that's that. But it's the cool part about it is since we're going to be talking about brand strategy, um, the first thing that we had to do was actually like define it for ourselves in a way that was accessible, that was genuine, authentic, valuable, applicable, right? And I still say this now, being able to design that definition with Marty is like the coolest thing I've done in my career to date, by far. Um, because the, the, the definition that we came up with is, it's just so, it's so dangerous. You know, it's, it's just so, um, it's so on point. It makes so much sense. It's, it is accessible. Um, and it's something that people really can wrap their arms around. And that's, that's the, like, that's the whole point because what's the point of understanding strategy if you can't command it, if you can't use it. Um, so, so right off the bat, I can just tell you that 
the, the meaning of strategy matters. We, we do believe, not everyone agrees, but we do believe that, that language matters. And the language that we chose, the, the, the words that we use to define it, um, really, really matter. So that's, that's what I would say about that. Yeah, no, that's, I think that's a perfect segue too. Um, so just to give the audience a little bit of a timeline here, we're breaking this up into three different main points. So we have um, intro to brand strategy. So we're going to delve into that first. Um, then we're going to talk about how to apply it and then how to measure it over time. So um, to really kick things off, I think you kind of already answered it, but we're going to go back. How would you actually define brand strategy? It's a long-term plan to outmaneuver the competitors and conditions in your market. And to make that even simpler, because we love simplicity. Um, I boil it down to a single word. It's outmaneuver. That is what, to me, to Marty, to other folks, it's, it's, that's the word we use. It's outmaneuvering. Um, now, that, that begs a lot of questions, right? What are you outmaneuvering? Why are you outmaneuvering? Where do you want to go to based on where you are? It's that kind of going from point A to point B thing, right? And, and I know that a lot of people boil strategy down to going from point A to point B, but that's, it's incomplete, right? And if we're just looking at, at strategy from, from 80,000 feet, it's you want to get somewhere, yes, but how you get there, what you encounter along the way, what can you anticipate, what are the conditions that you're dealing with? It's not just who you're dealing with, but what are you dealing with? And the, the, the end goal is, is to win something. No, you know, and, and how you define win, how you define victory, how you define accomplishment or the finish line, that's a different issue. That's a different story, right? But the point is, that's what you want, right? And it is almost never a straight line. Think there are obstacles, there are barriers seen, unforeseen, unanticipated. Um, and you have to maneuver, you have to maneuver, but you really have to out maneuver. And especially when you're talking about uh, competition, your competitors will probably have their own sense of strategy. Why? Because they're trying to accomplish the same thing you are, right? And so you need to outmaneuver them too. So that's how we define it. That's how I think about it. And the last thing I would say on that is that's not a framework. I know a lot of people like frameworks. They, and they, if there are frameworks that apply, right? But we're talking about a concept and a, and a mindset, a, a, a method of thinking, right? And understanding strategy isn't even as important as being a strategic thinker, thinking strategically, right? So, the definition is just a definition. It's not a framework. And, and frameworks can be great, but they can be restrictive, right? You can kind of be bound to the structure of the framework. Whereas a, I like to approach strategy with a very, very strong understanding and command of meaning and principle, right? And then I tailor it based on who I'm working with, right? And, and there are structures to the relationship with a client or a partner, but that's different from framework built around strategy. Okay. Does that, I hope that made any kind of sense. Yeah, no, I mean, it, uh, I think it put things, puts things in perspective um, just for, you know, for those that don't know a lot about strategy or have heard it, but haven't actually done it. And I guess the next question probably is, well, why is it so important? What would it actually do for somebody who has heard about it, wants to do it, but is kind of gun shy? Strategy, strategy does a lot of things. Um, it 
troubleshoots, it anticipates, it helps you to differentiate. That's a, that's a big core concept, right? It, it's a buzzword. It's a whatever you want to call it. Um, strategy is what helps you figure out how to differentiate, right? I mean, there are these kind of these, these journalistic questions that, that can help frame strategic thinking who, what, when, where, why, how, right? Um, so it can help, it can help to, to reveal how you should be differentiating, when you should be differentiating, um, uh, uh, why point B may actually not be where you want to go, right? What if point B is actually full of pitfalls? Or what if point B is a dead end for your brand, for your business, for your initiative, whatever you're looking to do? Um, how are you supposed to know that without some sort of strategic inclination, right? Maybe point C, maybe, maybe it's point Z. You know, maybe you have to do the strategic thinking, the recon, the research, um, the anticipation, some element of assumption making and guesswork and look beyond just what's in front of you, looking at not the next, you know, three months, but the next three years, the next three decades, right? So vision, not like your typical corporate vision or the CEO's vision, but the ability to see, especially the ability to see what's not in front of you. That's really important. Whether you're, de whether you're dealing with, whether, whether you are uh, uh, trying to see uh, through the lens of strategy, whether you're trying to see your uh, customer audience in a new or fresh revealing way, whether you're trying to look at avenues to outmaneuver your competitors in new and, and, and uncopyable ways, right? or whether you're looking at the market, because sometimes the market, your space, your category, is actually the biggest uh, competitor, your, your greatest obstacle, right? So you can do things blindly, but that doesn't really make sense. So a strategy done right, um, what does that actually look like? And I know it's subjective because different brands will do different things, but generally speaking, what are some trends or some outcomes that you see with brands that actually go through a process and they execute on it? Like what do those outcomes typically look like as opposed to their competitors who may not? Well, well a, great, a great example that I was super lucky to work on and super proud of was I worked with Duke University. And the agency I was at um, at that time uh, focused a lot on the higher education space. And typically the universities and colleges that we worked with, they were not at Duke's level, right? You know, colleges are ranked, rankings are, if not everything, depending on who you talk to, they're pretty important, right? It's the, arguably the most powerful marketing tool that a school has is their rank. Well, Duke was top 10. Top 10 schools, you typically wouldn't associate them with having a brand problem. And when I found out that Duke was walking in the door, my first thought was, why? What, what could possibly be the problem? And I remember the, the, the client was the dean of admissions, right? In charge of who, who's, who's coming in academically. And I mean, I'll never forget. He said, we have a confidence problem. I'll explain that. And it turned out that Duke students, now remember, top 10, they have, they have a, a top 10 business school, a top 10 law school, um, top 10 medical school. They're, top, uh, they're a top D1 sports school. I mean, like they're like really total package, right? He said, a lot of the students who go to Duke, Duke was their second choice or their third choice, it was their fallback. Mm. 
And I, I just remember I was like, I was just stunned. And so, so the challenge was how can, how can Duke students feel better about going to Duke? And we, we did our discovery, we did our research, we, you know, we, we found um, there was a lot of value to schools that kids were applying to before Duke, you know, Ivy League schools, schools that had like even greater heritage and equity in their badge, right? There was a, there was a badge value thing. And so basically, we, we weren't talking about rebranding Duke. We weren't talking about even coming up with this overarching brand strategy. We focused on one thing that is actually a core element of strategy, and especially for brand strategy. We kind of redesigned their student the same way Apple could design or redesign their customer tomorrow, the same way any business can and should design their customer. And one of the reasons is because the competitors very likely are not designing their customer. They're busy designing product, service, experience, content. They're designing so many other things that, that warrant design. What are they designing their customer? And that's different from just making a user profile or a customer profile. There's a difference. The difference is intent. Who do you want your customer to be? Design that customer. Don't design the customers that are buying from you. Design the customer you want to be buying from you. That's an outmaneuver. That's actually really easy to do in theory, but it takes tremendous confidence and courage to say, okay, if we do that, we're basically saying we want these people. And if we don't get those people, right, we're okay with that. And Duke basically went in on that. They embraced the idea of we want students who come to Duke to want to come to Duke. And I, I'll take it one step further and say, Marty and I are basically doing that for level C and ourselves right now. We designed our customer on day one and it was uninformed. It was, it was, it was informed, but not as much as we would have wanted it to be. We were starting, it was very casual, very organic. We had ideas, we had experience. We weren't quite sure who our customer would be at the end. Now we have experience. Now we know who our customers have been we know the broader landscape, what the broader landscape looks like. And we have a clearer idea of who we actually want going forward. And we are going through the, the exercise of kind of redesigning what that customer looks like. And it's, it's actually, I, 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 I said a couple minutes ago, it's, it's not that hard. It's, it's not a hard exercise to go through. It's a really hard thing to accept in your mind that, hey, we're going to stand for this and this and this, and we're going to stand for them, mm -hmm. not for everyone. Right. I mean, generally speaking, if, if you are for a certain type of person or a certain group of people, you can market to them more effectively. You can create messaging that resonates. But if you're trying to be everything for everybody, um, that's not good. But I like what you said about designing your customer because a lot of times it's reactionary. Oh, I noticed that this type of person comes in and purchases this product or chooses our firm. Well, there are so many more things to that. Is it profitable? Do you like doing those projects? Um, you know, do you like that customer in interaction? Are they always um, super cheap, I guess, to be kind of blunt about it? So you're absolutely right. There's an element of designing that. Um, and I think that's a pretty good segue to our next segment, um, which is how do you apply these concepts? And I think we, we touch on the importance of it, um, but if, if I'm somebody who's at a firm or I'm at 
um, a company and I want to position ourselves differently or I want to apply some strategy, what are some items that I need to put on my to-do list to take care of? The, the constant, the, 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 the common theme is the discovery. There is no strategy without discovery. And now I won't do strategy without discovery at all. And, you know, you might have a client that says, um, well, we just worked with a research firm and they spent, you know, a month with us and we spend $50,000 on them. And they, they talk to us, they talk to our customers, they pulled independent research and they boiled it all down into a, a, a report and we have the report, we'll give it to you. And I say, that's, that's great. That will be a part of what I do, but I need to do it all over again. Right, because there's a way to think about questions. There, there, there are, there's strategy to think about questions, right? What kinds of questions do you need to ask, right? How do you structure that? Who do you talk to that you reliably believe can, can give you the insight that you need, right? Um, so you have to be strategic about discovery. You have to also, it's not just about brand, it's about business. You, you should ideally, hopefully, have some grounding in the client's business, the company and their market and their space, right? That will help you look at not just the client, but also their competitors because you have to do that too. And then you have to be able to look at their market landscape to see what is happening. What is happening to the client? What's happening to their competitors? Is there something happening to the client that's not happening to the other players in their space? If so, why? It's like, it's like this tree with branches that just, and you have to be able to recognize that that's what it is and be able to kind of explore each branch. And when you explore it, you come back and you keep going, right? But you want to get as much information to work with as possible. And that's, you know, asking the right questions, being able to listen, being able to follow up or kind of take one question down one branch, right? And then pull it back and keep going. There's no template for that. There's experience, right? Be doing it enough times, um, doing it in different ways will give you a, a flavor for what you think works for you, what you think is more valuable to a, a client, but it just depends. It just depends. Um, and that's, again, why I don't like relying so much on, on a framework because I want to keep myself nimble enough that if I, if I turn over a rock and there's something to chase, I can chase it without worrying about being constricted by frame, right? Right, and I think it's good to stay flexible, you know, in your approach. And I'm just, once again, trying to think about our listeners and, you know, somebody who's, who's wanting to take this to their firm or to their company and to try, to try to pivot or to try to outmaneuver their competition. And I think when it comes to application, at least what I've gathered so far, and I agree wholeheartedly, you have to start with discovery. You have to understand with like where your where your um, competitors are in the market, where they're headed. You have to understand your customers and ultimately design your customers. I'm just trying to think: Are there any other points beyond that that are general enough to where you aren't following a direct framework or a checklist? Like for sure. Um, but I think one of the things that still gets lost in what in, in the conversation around strategy is strategy in itself is not enough, right? You need equally good creativity, equally good design. You need just as much disruptive thinking as you need strategic or creative thinking. And execution, right? And, and well, yeah. And then, and then you have to stick the landing, right? Right. So, so absolutely for sure. Um, and so there are all these kinds of uh, functions and, and opportunities for different roles and different black belts, you know, ninjas across those functions in those roles, right? One person cannot possibly do it all. Here's, here's another part. Here's another part of strategy. Um, 
typically with strategy, like I said, you are outmaneuvering the market, the space that you're in for sure, but typically you're outmaneuvering a competitor, a challenger. Really, a really key part of strategy is to use your competitors, your challengers' momentum, strengths against them. We call it judo strategy, right? In judo, principles of judo, in, in, I guess in, in one way, principle of jujitsu, it's like to use your opponent's strength against them. Otherwise, you can try to be stronger, but what if you're not? And do you really want to invest in, and, and um, expel the energy in you know, a, a contest of strength? Who wants to do that? So an example of that is to think about how your client, how, how your business um, thinks about and approaches content and social media, right? Content is king, has been kind of the prevailing mindset about content for a while now right? Content, content, content. And then maybe up until very recently, many businesses and brands had like a playbook for all of the social media channels that they felt they had to be on. Right? If there were 30 social media platforms, there were companies and brands that literally had accounts and felt a need to maintain accounts on all 30 channels. That's just stupid, right? So, but knowing that content is king is still kind of the, the prevailing mindset. Knowing and recognizing that more is more is the prevailing mindset, right? We had just have to make more content, more content, more content, do more, do more, make more, make more, right? You can outmaneuver that simply by taking the strategic approach of we're going to go less is more. That way, when we say something, when we put something out, when we produce content, when we share it, it resonates more. It means more. That it also lets you focus on the substance of it, not just keeping up with you know a, a daily, weekly, monthly quota of of quantity. Okay. And, and here, but here's, here's where it becomes really valuable. You're outmaneuvering. You are using that judo mentality against your, your competitor, because if you choose to go away from that less is, you know, more is more content, content, content thing, and go over to a space where it's less is more, it's not about content, it's about substance, it's about value, right? First of all, you own that space. That's your space. And your competitors won't be able to be there with you. They might look over and say, they're doing it differently. People are noticing. We should be doing that. We should embrace it. They won't be able to because their own momentum of having gone all in on more is more on it's all about content. The momentum will, will prohibit them from shifting. They'll talk about wanting to do it. They may genuinely want to do it. They won't be able to, and you will own that space. So that's, that's again, another example of, of how you can use strategy to outmaneuver. You can use your competitors' strengths against them rather than having to like reinvent the wheel or, or invest time, labor, and resources um, trying to come up with something new, the shiny new thing that you can claim as you're the only one that has it in that space. That's not always possible. It's not always practical. So 
Um, and again, this is just, it's a way of thinking. This is strategic thinking. It's not just about strategic making. Think, think, make, do. <laughs> How about just think first? Think first. It's much more likely to tell you what you should do, what you could do. And then you'll look back and you'll realize that's what you were supposed to do. I love it. Yeah, I think there's just, there's so much there to unpack. Um, and we do have to start wrapping up kind of soon. But I'd say some of the big takeaways there, start with discovery, design your customers and use competitor strengths against them. And I, you know, you won't really know that unless you're doing the research and trying to dig into to what they're up to and being observant. So, okay, so, so far we've talked about how to apply this and we touch on a couple of different concepts. Um, so starting with discovery, uh, designing your customers and using competitor strengths against them. And I know you kind of wanted to touch on differentiation. So I think now would be a, a great time to kind of break that uh, concept down as well. Yeah, sure. I, zooming out, differentiation is one of our core principles of brand, right? If everyone is doing one thing, do something else. But, but it's not enough to just say you want to be different. You really, you really have to be different. You have to do something different. Um, and we believe that the best way to be different is to actually be disruptive. It's to take the idea of being different and kind of go over the cliff a little bit, you know, you know, like get a little nuts. And differentiation is not a strategy. It's a core principle of brand, okay? But strategy can help you identify those ways to be not just different, but disruptive. It can reveal ways to be innovative. It can reveal ways and, and purpose to asking questions like, what if, why not? That, that's, that's what innovation is. It's asking those questions. Um, strategy reveals, usually reveals, how you should be measuring what you're doing so that you can have some informed sense of, are we winning? Are we falling short? Are we missing the mark? It can inform metrics. It can inform uh, uh, all of those, all of that stuff, right? So, um, the, the, I guess to bring this full circle, the reason we care about it so much and the reason why we emphasize it the way we do is because we've observed that a lot of businesses, a lot of brands really don't understand what strategy really is. There are a lot of misconceptions, misunderstandings, misapplications of the principle and the concept. We wanna solve for that. We don't think that the solution is very difficult. We actually think the solution is very easy. Um, the practice is hard and it is, it's, it's an art form. There is artistry to strategy. Um, I, I heard a ferociously brilliant guy earlier today on Clubhouse, and I'm forgetting his name, and I'm I'm like so ashamed that I that I forget his name, but I'll see him and I'll I'll hear him again. He was talking about he broke strategy and stra and, and the role of a strategist down in a way I've never heard before, and he said that a strategist may only be good at one tiny little part of the bigger strategic picture of which there are many. But for example, a strategist could be a brilliant explainer of ideas, um, a brilliant framer of concepts, a brilliant framer of questions, a brilliant researcher, a brilliant, uh, 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 emotionally intelligent, you know, genius, right? They just get people, they get story. They could be a, a uniquely brilliant storyteller. These are all elements of, of strategy, right? And it, it's, it's so fundamentally true. And to anyone listening to this 
and they're thinking, they're rethinking their approach, their business, their brand's approach to, to, to strategy, all of those things matter. If you had just one person able to do one of those tiny little slivers really, really well, that is a huge competitive advantage. That's strategy. Mm-hmm. The gut feeling for me, and you know, obviously we do strategy here, is there are so many different companies out there that don't know what they're missing by it. And I feel like it just it benefits so many different people when you have these different businesses taking on these disruptive concepts and bringing them to life, to challenging the status quo, to going out on a limb, taking risks. Like that's where the most iconic things are created. And if you lose that element, it's like, well, what's the point in doing business anyways? I don't know, I'm, I'm pretty, I don't want to say cynical at this point, but I've just, I've dealt with a lot of companies and like, they just want to, you know, stay the course and do the same thing. And it's like, well, what, what's the, what's the fun in that? What's the point in that? But anyways, I'll, I'll get off my little soapbox there. Um, so last but not least measurement, I know you touched on a little bit. Um, do you have any other final like thoughts on like, how do you measure brand or how do you measure strategy over time? Well, time is the key word. You know, during the strategic development process, you'll, you hopefully can identify those bench, you know, you'll identify benchmarks, you'll identify um, uh, 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 units of measurement, right? You'll, you'll figure out what, you know, what is success? Where do you want to be when? And there will be usually short-term and long-term, but it's still time, right? Um, so I think when you're working with a client or when you're working internally with your team, the first thing to do is to, is to be very brutally honest with yourselves and your team with your client about the role of time, right? Because if the expectation is to go from night to day overnight in a week, in a month, that's again, dependent, but it's probably unrealistic, right? And even just the strategic process itself takes time, right? Strategy is not something that you do in an afternoon meeting. It takes time. It takes time to do discovery. It takes time to crunch and and boil everything down into its most concentrated set of insights and then build a plan to outmaneuver from that. That takes time, right? So measurement is super important, but in the overall process, it it just comes after so much other stuff that's in some ways more important. Because here's the other thing about measurement. I heard another genius say this, recently it was it was amazing basically he said um why does everything need to be measured and and the implication is not everything needs to be measured strategy will tell you what needs to be measured and in that sense it's just dependent on the situation, on the client, on the space, on the scenario, on the challenge. It's just dependent. But again, strategy will tell you what those things are. And and not just what they are, but how to measure. And usually if you do it right, there will be some sort of kind of prescription, right, for results based on what the results are. So I I hate to give that answer. I hate to give that lawyer's favorite answer. It just depends, but it does. And I think it's irresponsible if I try to just rifle off um, a list. One one thing I would say, because we get asked this all the time, like what books do we read? What resources do we use um, for this, especially for an engagement? Um, uh, Wally Olin's branding handbook is, like that's the one that I still refer back to for kind of a scope of engagement. So when I'm going to do a strategy, I kind of just take a look 
just to see if something jumps out at me that I'm not, that I maybe had forgotten or maybe that I hadn't done in a while. So that's a really, a really potent resource to, to give a framework to the engagement, not necessarily to the process, to the engagement. Okay. Yeah, perfect. I mean, all really good points there, Andy. Um, I guess to really kind of summarize today, um, you know, what are the, the big takeaways here? I would say for anybody who's looking to do brand strategy, you have to start with discovery. Um, you have to understand the landscape. You have to understand your competitors and where they're going. Um, you have to design your customers, which I think is just such a cool way to, to put that instead of, you know, just it, looking at who's coming through the door or who's reaching out to you, who is that ideal client or who is that customer that you can design. Um, use your competitor strengths against them. So looking at the different, the different strategies that they're employing and how can you be um, different or how can you um, kind of silo them into what they're doing? Judo strategy. That's what it is. It's judo strategy. And that's literally what we call it. That's how we teach it. That's what it's called. That works for us. Mm -hmm. And also to be different, uh, I think it's, it's really important at looking at your competitors and what they're doing and how you can outmaneuver them. Um, very important. And lastly, when it comes to measurement, um, we didn't really touch on too many like specific items, but a couple that come to mind and we discuss this off camera, um, whether it's market surveys and you're putting out surveys, you know, this year, and then you do it again in a couple of years to see brand awareness and, um, how many people know of you. Otherwise, um, on top of that, you can look at market share numbers, see if you're, gaining in certain areas or decreasing in other areas. So there are some other tactile ways of doing that. There, there's an anticipated change. There's an anticipated delta between where you're starting as of now and some point in the future, right? And that's, that may sound super pedestrian, super obvious, um, but that's when you, think about, when you think about metrics through the lens of strategy, it's a delta, it is a change. The strategic process and the strategic thinking that you deploy will help you understand what you should be anticipating, what the change could be, should be, would be, right? Based on other conditions, other factors, okay? But it's a change. Perfect. So I think overall we've discussed a lot today. Um, and actually what's kind of cool about doing this is we're going to have a full write up on our website. So you can see um, just how this is all bulleted out if you're more of a, um, a reader, if you will. So I guess to wrap up, um, Andy, I want to give you 30 seconds, a uh, little shameless plug, if you will. Uh, what do you have going on in your life? <laughs> um, the, the, what we are doing is Marty and I are designing the third level class of our master class program. It's really exciting because it's completely original thinking. It's not based on any book that's been written by anyone, not Marty, not, you know, David Auker, you know, it's, this is all kind of unexplored, you know, undiscovered country that we're getting into. And it's really exciting to be, to be doing that with Marty side by side, it, it feels groundbreaking, although I hate saying that. Um, it's a tremendous responsibility to not just get right, because we actually don't know if we'll be right or wrong. It's a tremendous responsibility to get smart and make it valuable, actionable, and achievable for the folks in this community. That's, and that's our big focus this year like basically after our master class next week we're kind of going heads down for like six months and and hoping and hoping that it all works out but no we we have some really bananas ideas for for what comes at like what's above brand strategy if brand strategy is so fundamentally important and so valuable and the hot topic of the moment where do we go from there we think we think we know what that is, but we're not completely sure. We're still kind of exploring in the dark. So that's what we're doing. 
Well, I don't think I'm the only one to say that I'm excited to see where you take it. Um, so yeah, I guess if others want to follow you, connect with you, what are the best channels to do so? Uh, we're very active on LinkedIn. So you can search my name, Andy Starr. You can search Marty Newmeyer, N-E-U-M-E-I-E-R. Um, we, uh, he's not on Twitter anymore, but LinkedIn, our website is levelc.org. And for those of you who have allowed yourselves to go down the clubhouse rabbit hole, we are on clubhouse. I'm Andy Starr. You can search Andy Starr, Level C, or Marty Newmeyer. And we, when we're there, we usually have something pretty cool to say. So Perfect. Perfect. What a pleasure. Um, I'm sure we'll do more of these in the future, but thank you so much for being on. No, I always love talking to you, Andrew.